How much protein do we need when we're on a low carb diet? Or how much protein do we need when we're in ketosis? All too often I see people talking about consuming massive amounts of protein, especially when they're on a low calorie diet. Well, in this video, I wanna explain what your actual metabolic needs and your organ needs are when it comes to protein and it comes to actual glucose production. So what we wanna look at here is that the heart and the brain are the only organs that actually require protein or glucose. All the other organs can actually function off of fatty acid metabolism. So we really have to look at how much the heart and the brain needs in the way of glucose when we're trying to determine how much protein we take in. The reason being is the body can always get glucose from every single energy source. The body can break down protein into amino acids and ultimately into glucose or sugar. The body can obviously break down carbohydrates into glucose. And then of course the body can actually break down fatty acids into glucose when necessary as well. However, for the most part, it's usually going to break down fatty acids into ketone bodies. Now when you're in any kind of fasting state, okay, and I say fasting state with a grain of salt because I mean that in terms of any kind of lower calorie diet or calorie deficit in general, the body doesn't break down as much in the way of protein from the tissue as you think it does. You see, we're not as catabolic as everybody thinks. The body is going to break down about 26% of protein from tissue, and it's gonna break down about 74% of fat from tissue. So you're much more likely to be burning fat in a low calorie diet than you are to be burning muscle. However, of course, we are all interested in making sure that we maintain our muscle whenever we are on any kind of diet. So let me talk about how much protein you actually need. And I'm gonna get a little bit mathematical on you, but I'm gonna to try to break it down in a simple sense that everyone can understand. Now your brain needs about 100 grams of glucose per day to function. Now that doesn't mean that you need to go out and consume 100 grams of carbohydrates. Because like I mentioned before, your body is very efficient at breaking down protein and converting them into glucose, and sometimes breaking down fats or glycerol into glucose whenever it needs it. What we have to look at is that your body starts assimilating about 75 grams, or 75% in this case, of its glucose from protein. The other 25% is going to come from glycerol. So right now we're looking at the fact the body's gonna convert 75 grams or so of glucose from protein. Now that's when you're just starting a low carb diet. That's in a normal functioning person. But here's the interesting thing, and I want you to pay attention. After three weeks, sort of this magical thing happens in the brain. Your brain starts to get adapted to running on fats and suddenly the glucose requirements change. It drops down to about 40 grams of glucose needed per day. So that tells us right there, that's a, like a 60% decrease in overall need for glucose. Now, how this plays into the amount of protein you consume is pretty critical because now, if we follow that same kind of ratio, the body is producing about 18 grams of glucose now from glycerol, from existing fats, and it's only requiring about 25 grams of glucose from protein. So suddenly your protein requirements changed. So what's important to note is that after that three week period, your protein requirements have changed because here's what's really important for the person that's in ketosis or the person that's on a low carb diet. Okay, since your brain requirements have changed, if you go along consuming the same amount of protein that you have been consuming while your brain is requiring less, that means that you have a spillover or an extra amount of protein that's not needed that your body is gonna convert into glucose. That excess glucose can kick you out of ketosis or keep you out of that optimal low carb range. That is very, very critical because that is how you ultimately burn fat. So really, how much protein do you consume? Well, it's gonna vary from person to person depending on your activity, depending on your sex, depending on your age, depending on your overall stress. But one thing that we wanna look at is nitrogen balance. And I've talked about nitrogen balance in other videos, but basically nitrogen balance is how much protein you're consuming. If you are in a positive nitrogen balance, it means that your body has taken in enough protein, it's converted it into nitrogen, and now you have an abundance of nitrogen. That's a good indicator that you're taking in too much protein. Now, if you have a negative nitrogen balance, like I've talked about in other videos, that means you're not getting enough for your body to actually function, which means it's going to start breaking down muscle tissue. You wanna be right around that equilibrium. You wanna be right at that equal amount. And if you're wondering how you can test your nitrogen levels, well, you can simply use a nitrogen testing kit where you ultimately pee on a strip and it'll tell you what kind of nitrogen balance you have. But if you just use simple logic and you realize that when you first start a diet, you need more protein, and as you go along, your requirements change, then you can be well ahead of the curve. 
but you don't want to be dramatically reducing your calories. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to replace those protein calories with fat calories. Now remember, your protein calories are less than your fat calories, so your overall volume of food will decrease, but you want to keep the overall level of calories the same. Remember, we don't want that excess protein when we are on a low carb diet because it converts to sugar. So hopefully this gives you a basic idea of how you can optimize your low carb lifestyle to get the most out of your brain and not have that overage of protein that's gonna kick you out of ketosis. I'll see you in the next video.